Hi everyone and welcome to a, another episode in our UE4 tutorials. This is the second part in our swimming tutorial series. In the first part we got our character swimming around in our water volume, just possibly holding down W key and moving the mouse. What we are focusing on this episode is getting the animations working on our mesh. So prior to this I have already downloaded and retargeted and got our animations working with the mannequin and what I'm going to do is include these in the project files in the description below. So find the link there, click on it and you can download these two uh, animation files. Import them in and you'll get the swimming idle, which is this thing, and the swimming forward, which is this one. So what we're going to be doing now is going into our third person and in BP and we're going to incorporate swimming into our settings we've got here. So open up your state machine and in here you'll see the state machine that's currently handling the player's current state for movement, be it idle run or jumping. Double click on idle run. And in here you can see the animation blend space being used to work out whether they should be idle, walking or running. So we're going to do something similar for idle and swimming. So let's go and create our blend space. So go add new, animation and you'll see blend space one directional. And we want to choose the uh, mannequin. And you want to open this up. So in here, we're going to have two, uh, two animations. And this graph is going to blend between one and the other. I won't go into too much detail how this works. I've got videos about animation and blend spaces. So check that out as well on the channel. But basically, we have two, we're going to have two animations on here. We're going to have idle on this side, and we're going to have um, the movement on this side. So what we're going to do is drag those into it. So find swimming idle, drag it to the far left, and then drag forward swimming to the far right. Now, as you move this green dot along, you'll see it blend between idle and swimming. Okay. So what we're going to be using is the swim um, speed to calculate when it should be hitting this animation. I want this hit animation to be hit pretty much as soon as we start moving. So this value here, 100, needs to be changed to match that. Now the easiest way of doing that is looking at your swim speed. So if we go into our player character, and click on character movement, Find your swimming section and you'll see a max swim speed of 300. So if we type in 300 in that space there, we can do that on the left hand side details panel. So we'll go horizontal axis and we're going to do maximum axis value of 300. And so now when we're at full speed, it swims like that and then blends back like so. And if we want, we can name this to swim speed. And that's how blend spaces work. Okay. So click save and we'll close that. So back on here, we can use that swim blend space. So drag that out. And we're going to drag in speed into that as well. So speed is just the velocity of the character model. So that can go into both of these. But you can't connect both of these to this result node. What we need to do is determine which one it should be using at any time. So what we're going to be doing is doing a blend space. So not blend space, a blend, sorry, by ball. And if it's true, we're going to use the swimming one. So let me just swap these around. And if it's false, we're going to use the third person normal one. Then you hook the resulting pin to your output. Now, blend spaces by ball requires a boolean, and when that boolean is true, it will do this one, and when it's false, it will do this one. And here you've got some settings if you want to change the speed of the blend between the two. So what we're doing here is on active value here, we're going to make a new variable. So new variable is swimming, and that get plugged straight into your active value. Now, this boolean isn't been set anywhere yet, but that is to do next so we're all set up here so we let's go back to our event graph on here and on the event graph we need to find out if the player is currently swimming 
Now, the best way of doing this is getting the reference to the character before we start doing update animations. The reason why is this is a tick, and we don't want to keep casting to things on a tick. We want to do it just once, really. So, on the begin play here, I'll tell you what, actually, what might be a bit nicer way of doing it is on try get porn owner. When it's successful, we're going to do a function. So we can create a custom event and we call this one get character. And we'll do a do once on this thing. So we only ever do this function once. Once it does that, on the completed, we're going to uh, cast to character. And the object will be this pawn owner. So you can drag that to the pawn owner, or what we would actually do is do an input on a get character here. So new input here, we'll do pawn. And will it be the same value as this? So this needs a pawn object reference. So if I change my drop down here to a pawn object reference, and that will connect to that object like so. And as character, we're going to promote that to a variable and call it character. So now I've got a reference to the character this animation uh, this uh, animation blueprint is tied to um, when this is called. So let's call that after it is valid. So we do get character. And because that do once is there, it will only ever do it once. Let's drag that try get porn owner into there. Okay, so now we've got that, we've now got access to the character uh, we want to use. And from that, we can drag that out at the end. And then we want to get character movement. And you want the component get character movement. And then from there, you can get the movement mode. And we want to check if that's equal to an enum. I'm going to check if it's equal to swimming. If it is, oops, sorry, I do it, but don't have to do a branch because what we can do is simply just drag the set boolean is swimming and connect that to it. So when we get the character movement of the character and the movement mode of that character movement, if it's swimming, it will set the boolean to true. If it's not, it will set it to false. And click compile. So now, it should be animation. And you can see it go idle, and when I start moving, it'll blend into our swimming animation. So the next thing we need to do is make it so it can rotate based on our character's your factor. Okay. So let's go into our third person character and take a look how we achieve this. So the way it works is currently it's locked down and not using the control rotation at all in the your uh, anyway, no, not your pitch, sorry. And to do that, we need to ad hoc change it to use rotation in that pitch. So what we can do is we can go into our graph here and we want the uh, event um, movement mode changed I think it is yeah on movement mode changed so as soon as we've changed movement mode this will fire off and we're going to check if new movement mode is equal to swimming so if it's equal to swimming that'll go into a branch after that we want to set the rotation rate of our character movement so it can actually move in that rotation so click on character movement and down here, you'll see rotation rate. Okay, by default, 540 will be in Z, so you can only rotate to in the Z. And it will, if we change the rotation X and Y to a different value, it will actually work. And the reason why it works is because we've got orient rotation to movement ticked already. That means it will move, uh, it will rotate the whole capsule based on which way it is moving. So let's have a crack at doing this. So drag your character movement out. And from there, we're going to go set rotation rate. And we want two of those. So we want one for true and one for false. Make sure 
make sure you hook up the targets like so. And the rotation rate for true, so if it is swimming, we want it to be 540 in all of them. And if it's false, we want 540 to only be in the Z. And we click compile. So now if I test this out and I move my character, you can see his orientation is now changing based on which direction he is swimming. If I slow down to a stop, he'll go to idle. So at the moment it's set to idle. Now the reason why it's set to idle is because we've slowed down. But if you notice the rotation of the pawn, and I've turned on the capsule so you can see this, you can see it's not upright, so it looks a bit odd. So to demonstrate this further, if I were to swim all the way down and then stop moving, it would go into idle like so, and it just looks strange, yeah? No one swims underwater like that. So let's fix that. So let's go back to our animation graph. And in that animation graph, after we've done the is swimming, what we're going to be doing is checking the speed of the character. And if we are swimming, if they're both tr uh, a certain value and true, we're going to tell its rotation to be fixed at a certain rotation. So let's get the speed up. And we want to check whether or not it is less than or equal to, let's say, 50. 50. And we want to combine these two booleans into an AND statement. So go AND or AND gate rather. And that hooks up like so. And finally into a branch. So the true path of this refers to the speed being basically standing still and you are swimming. And if that's the case, we're going to get the character. And we're going to set the actor rotation. To a value or to true. Now the value we're going to set it to is going to be the current rotation but we're going to get rid of the x and y. So from the character you can use the same one or use a different one. I'm going to use the same one. We're going to get rotation to so get uh, actor rotation and we're going to split this. On the new rotation you're going to split that again and we're going to just drag our your into the Z. Everything else can be left at zero. So click compile and close that. So now if I move into a weird angle like so and stop, it will snap my player back to an idle position. And there you have it. It's a bit jarring, but you can use interps to fix that if you want to. Um, We'll actually do that in the next episode. We'll fix the, uh, the snappiness of this in the next episode. So join us in the next part where we fix that. If you want to see in the next episode right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and donate just one dollar to see the episode plus many more too. You also get access to Discord as well as many other, many other benefits. Big shout out and thank you to all my supporters so far on Patreon and on YouTube as well. Couldn't be doing this without you guys. It means so much that you are uh, finding my stuff so useful. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.